Happy Hog. Happy as hogs in slop. They're in front seven to six. Six here, as you see some of the halftime diagramming that they did there. Strategizing on how to keep Seattle off the board and put some more points here on the board in the second half. They have done a great job of it so far. You know, I think that uh, Seattle came into this game really fully expecting to, to put some points up on the board against an um, inexperienced Tacoma coaching staff, but it hasn't happened. Boy, you really got to hand it to the coaches on the uh, Tacoma side. They have done just an outstanding job of game planning here, as have the Seattle coaches. This has just been a good game. Defenses have definitely had the advantage. Both teams running some new offensive uh, sets and some new schemes on offense. Difficult to get the hang of. They have not been as crisp. The defenses have controlled the line of scrimmage here for the most part today, especially Tacoma's defense. What an outstanding job. Let's go down to the sidelines now where um, Amy is standing by with Coach Bob Stull. Amy? Coach Stull, what, what strategy do you have lined up for the second half? Well, the first half, we gave him some breaks with the uh, kicking game, so we try to get those corrected. And uh, I think the biggest thing for us is to get some first downs. We're not moving the ball real, very well on offense. Our defense is playing hard, but we need to get some first downs, put some points on the board. Great. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Good luck. <laughs> Thanks, Amy. Amy pinch hitting that time for our man on the sideline, Lyle Benjamin, who was away, I think, on a potty break here at halftime. So our uh, the director on the field, Amy, doing a great job. There she is. Hi, Amy. Doing a great job of pinch hitting. Maybe uh, we'll come to you a couple times in the second half, Amy. Nice job. Nicely done. Good to hear from Bob Stull down there as well. We leave no stone unturned. Pull out all the stops for you. Anybody that's, if a fan in the stands wants to come down and interview somebody, just raise your hand. We'll get to you. Boy, a huge roar here as the Tacoma team, the home team, comes back out onto the field. Definitely a partisan crowd here at the Tacoma Dome. And it's been a long time since Tacoma has had that. As we mentioned, Tacoma has lost five straight Bacon Bowls. Three of those in the King Dome, three in a row, the other two in the Tacoma Dome. And uh, that was under a different coaching staff. Looks like uh, rookie coach Dave Frost and his staff are in a position here at least to get the uh, to get the monkey off their back and get a win for the first time in a long time. A little bit of uh, history about the uniforms. I'm sure you know this, Tim, that uh, the University of Puget Sound's colors being displayed here, or you could say the University of Oregon if you want for our Tacoma, and uh, also uh, the Seattle Seahawks uh, uniforms uh, as we look at some of the halftime we passed. That gentleman has a task ahead of him. And uh, that's how the uniform scheme uh, got to be. And uh, Ed, back me up on this particular deal here. Uh, I don't think those are the original UPS uniforms anymore. No, they're not. What happened was when the game first started, one group used UPS uniforms, the other used Seahawks. So it looked like the Seahawks playing the loggers. All right. You are watching, of course, Bacon Bowl 17. And this Bacon Bowl is brought to you by State Farm Insurance. Coca-Cola. Tapco Credit Union. And by Bill's Towing. Just for the great sponsors here that, that help make the Bacon Bowl a reality every year. One of the finest charity football events in the entire United States. Again, we're fortunate enough to, enough to have it right here in our backyard. And I'm telling you what, folks, sometime throughout the year, you may get a call from the good folks at the Bacon Bowl. They call soliciting people to come to the game. They sell tickets via the telephone. What many people do throughout the Pacific Northwest is they buy tickets as a donation. Those tickets, they're not planning on coming to the game. Those tickets are then donated to uh, children at different, um, maybe an orphanage or a foster home, things like that. And that's right. If you're part of an organization that works with children, get a hold of the Bacon Bowl Committee, and they will supply you tickets for next year to get the kids out to the game. You couldn't ask for a better way to spend a few bucks. And I'll tell you, you couldn't ask for a better way to spend an evening. Next year, make plans now to attend this game. It is a lot of fun. They make it kind of a festive atmosphere out here. That's Mark Crandall getting the second half underway. And this will be Reggie Chapman at the 18. Good kick coverage. Breaks away from one man. And if he gets the corner, he might be gone. Crandall could save the day and does. The kicker, who doubles, though, as a defensive back, uh, makes the stop there. And, um, boy, I think he saved a touchdown. Reggie uh, Chapman could have been gone had it not been for Mark Crandall. Chapman, there was good coverage initially, but he did a good job of popping it outside. Oh, that's actually Joe Elliott, I'm sorry. Had my uh, my teams confused there for a minute. Joe Elliott, Joe's gonna kill me. 
I will see Joe after uh -oh. the game, and if he hears about that, he's going to kill me. Joe Elliott, Joe Elliott, Joe Elliott. He's an officer and a gentleman, I'm sure. He is, well, he's very much a gentleman. He's a great guy and a great player, and I'm sorry, Joe. I just, uh, momentary confusion on my part. All right, Seattle now in Tacoma territory. I got to flip my spotting boards over. That's the problem. Amy has me all confused here. Well, I tell you, Sam Brayboy must have read the stats at halftime and saw they had minus one yard rushing. Comes out running hard here in the second half and picks up about four yards on first down. Good open field tackle by Scott Brown, though. He reads them. You look at his midsection to see where he's going. That's no fake right there. If you can get to that, you can get to him, which he did. Actually, it was a pickup of six, and it's second and four. Well, I feel terrible. Joe Elliott's got to have a big play here so I can make up for that. High backs are Suddeth and Brayboy in behind quarterback Eric Barton, who's gone most of the way here for Seattle. That give again to Brayboy, trying the corner, and he stacked up, boy. Another nice job pursuit-wise. We had the safety, Richard Lamonica coming up. Also in on the play, Donald Ciprin. Uh, Shell Mays was over from his inside linebacker spot, and we have a hurt hog. There's Brayboy unofficially, or I guess officially at this point, nine carries for 33 yards. The injured hog. Looks like Chris Westby. Let's wait and see how Chris is. He's down on the field. Chris is deputy with the Sheriff's Department in Pierce County. One of the biggest guys on the Tacoma Hogs roster. Six foot seven, 270 pounds. I guess that would be the biggest guy <laughs> on the roster. <laughs> Just a hair bigger than Ed Troyer. <laughs> Ed goes about 6'6", six, six, maybe, you know, 250, somewhere in there. I think I had a couple inches underneath both of you. Yeah. <laughs> well, there he is. Big number 74 is up and walking off. If you're interested in participating in caring, send your donations to the Bacon Bowl at 5242 California Avenue Southwest, Seattle, Washington, 98136. Again, that's 5242 California Avenue Southwest, Seattle, Washington, 98136. You don't have to come to the Tacoma Dome. You don't even have to buy tickets. Just please, if you're enjoying the game and you enjoy children and, and want to help some children's charities and help in this effort, send your donations in. They, they go to a great cause. They're, they're, uh, they're put to great use, in other words. Seattle now with a third and short yardage to go. A key situation. Third and one. They're going to throw the ball. Actually, I think he'll keep it. He runs. Oh! I think he got the first down. I, I got ahead of myself. Almost said first down, but a nice job of closing the gap there defensively by uh, the Hawks. Well, you need good blocking, and Sam Brayboy was going to be the man that blocks for him, but all of a sudden he kind of ran into the backside of the quarterback. And let's take a look at uh, the replay as uh, the quarterback, Barden, will roll out, looking to throw. Now he has to make his mind up right there to run. Needs a block. Come on, Brayboy, do it for me. He does, but not quick enough. As a result, it's going to be close, but... Close enough is uh, good enough for first down. Yeah, they did get the first down. They eked it out. So it's first and 10 now in Tacoma territory. And that's Bray Boy. Running left, finds a hole. Running through Hogs all the way down to the 26-yard line. The ball came loose. Tacoma's got the football. Will they say it's down? This is the call. I think it's down. I think the ball is down on the ground. And Tacoma will not be happy about that. Shell Mays disagrees with that call, but I think they're going to say that Brayboy was down on the turf when the ball came loose, and it's going to be a first and 10 Seattle. We have another injured Tacoma Hog player on the sidelines here, though, laying at about the 40-yard line. We'll check his condition and his name when we come back to the Bacon Bowl. 12 minutes, 45 seconds left to play in the third quarter. 7-6 Tacoma. Insurance is puzzling sometimes, but your State Farm agent can put it all together for you. The best value in car insurance, low-cost coverage for your home, life insurance, coverage for your health. Everything fits together when all your family insurance needs are served by one person, your State Farm agent. Hand in Hand with John L. Scott is a community service program funded by the agents and employees of John L. Scott. Our program provides transportation support to assist food banks and other outside not-for-profit organizations for the delivery of food and other donated items. If your organization needs transportation for a community service program or event, call your local John L. Scott agent or 206-230-7622.
We are back, and the injured hog was Shane Weirish, an outside linebacker. He got up, though, and walked off under his own power. There you see him. Looks like he's going to be okay. May have cramped up, actually. It's a little warm to be playing football here in the Dome. That's Suddeth straight ahead. Mike Suddeth with one of his rare carries on the evening. Picks up about four, and I'll tell you, Seattle made some adjustments at halftime. They're running the football with a little bit more authority, a little bit more pop in the second half. Well, you, you have an offense that's uh, new. You call it exploratory surgery in the first half, but now it's ready to operate and ready to close, I guess, if you want to use doctor's terms here. I think Shane's okay. You saw him give us a wink there, which is good to see. That's Seattle fun. now second and about six. Smith and Elliott are the wide receivers, but Suddeth on the quick hitter right up the middle, bangs ahead where he's met by Shell Mays, but he gets down inside the 20 to about the 17 yard line. All right, let's get down to the sidelines. Lyle Benjamin standing by with former Seahawk Vic Miner. Lyle. Th Thanks, Tim. Down here with Vic Miner, former Seahawk. What are you guys going to do to counteract their passing attack this half? Well, at this point in time, I'm moving back. I was playing Sam Backer. But we'll move back to the secondary and try to strengthen the secondary and shut down the passing and control the outside run. So uh, what we're going to do is try to make sure that on the first down, we contain them to like two or three yards so everybody put the ball up and we can get a pick and get some uh, defensive turnovers. Mm -hmm. Overall, how do you think you guys are doing? Overall, we're okay. We just got a lot of new people this year on that team and trying to play together, I think, the first half. We had a lot of jitters with some of the guys, and so now I think we were settled down, hoping we can get things done in the second half. All right, good luck. Thank you. Back to you guys. All right, thanks, Lyle. Boy, I'll tell you, Vic Miner, they they, had, they put in this scheme with him playing that Sam Backer, the strong back, where he came up, as I told you earlier, from it played ba played basically a safety position, but started out over the tight end, almost lining up as a defensive end. They're going to make some changes as they have offensively. They've seen some holes where they can run, and Sam Brayboy trying to exploit it cuts back in. And that was a nice tackle, boy. Shell Mays turned him inside. Kim Pichos was there to finish him off. Nice job defensively by Tacoma there. On the play previously, by the way, as we were hearing from Vic Miner, Mike Studdeth had run for the first down. So that was a first down play for Seattle. Look at the play here. Walkinshaw's out there to shut it down. Shell Mays gets him around the ankles, and Kim Pichos finishes him off. Good pursuit. A bunch of hogs out there on pursuit. That was an NFL hit. Yeah. That's all I can say about that. They hit hard. It's second down and eight at the Tacoma 10 for Seattle. This is their by far their best penetration of the ball game so far. Their only other score coming on a punt return. And Brayboy again on the run. Don Walkinshaw forces the fumble and Tacoma's got it. I think Shell Mays picked it up. It was Don Walkinshaw from his outside linebacker spot coming in to meet Brayboy as he took the ball around the outside. It took the great Tacoma hop and Shell Mays was there to make the recovery. And boy, that's got to be sweet for Shell. His brother Stafford on the Seattle coaching staff and they go back and forth. Here's the replay as we come. Here's the hand up. Ray Boy's got it. As you said, here's what he can tackle. You strip, you grab the shirt, recover that fumble and do something with it. That's exactly what you got to do. Was Can't, that Ciprin that got might, it? Might have been Ciprin. 26 as Water opposed to 86. The yeah, there's the man that, that caused it all. Spent five months with the San Diego Chargers. Probably never had a bigger play, though, than that one right there. That had to feel good for him. Seattle apparently on the doorstep of scoring here. And the Hawks take it away, and now they have it deep in their own territory at the Seattle 12-yard line. Their own 12, excuse me, to give. Terrence Kyer pops it outside. He's ridden out of bounds after a pickup of five. Mark Spadoni there on the stop along with... It looked like number 21, Vic Miner, coming up again now. We'll see where Miner lines up on this play. He was lining up on the line of scrimmage, but they want to shut down the, the passing lane, shut down the passing attack, so I think now you will see him drop back into a safety position. There's the man who fumbled. Well, I'll tell you, it's got to hurt. He'll get more opportunities, though. Seattle definitely making the adjustments. They were able to run the football there so right. far in that opening drive of the second half much more effectively than they did the entire first half. Second down, five yards to go. Oh. Boy, I'll tell you what. Wayne Johnson just absolutely leveled Barry McCollman. We're going to get another look at it from right up the middle. I think there was movement on the Tacoma line and Wayne Johnson took advantage. Let's see if you see movement. I don't. Well, I didn't see the movement, but Shane Johnson just, it's tough. Well, they, there was movement because they're back in Tacoma up. 
So not only it's adding insult to injury here, not only does McCollman end up on his wallet, but they lose five yards on top of it. It brings up a second and 15. Let's see now if we see the, the movement. We're going to look at it very slowly here. Watch the guard on the right side. Oh, yeah. well, I'll tell you, there was movement on the upper, the, the right tackle's part, but I think Wayne Johnson was already in motion and across the uh, neutral zone before that movement. Doesn't go that way, though, and it's uh, back to second and 10 now. Get over there! Give up the middle tire. Not much running room that time. Now they didn't. You know, and the longer the quarterback takes with the count on the line, we talk about being edgy, wanting to get off the block. Sometimes guys are going to start second guessing, and that's when you have your problem with your motion situation here. So it's third down now and seven yards to go. Some of the young fans looking on and looking intent. I think everyone here is surprised at the quality of the play go. so far. Show those pearly whites. Let's see those. Look at that. Another Miss America right there. <laughs> Boy, she got a great seat, too. Good seat here for the ball game. So Tacoma now facing third and seven. A probable throwing situation. We will see what they like to do. Throwing the fade, and I think we're going to have pass interference called that time against Shandy Cobain. Would not allow Dennis Moore to get off the line of scrimmage. Once the ball was in the air, he's got to uh, let go. You get a chuck there at the line, but and I think Shandy's arguing his case that, that that was his chuck at the line, but uh -huh. the ball was in the air. Dennis Moore, oh! They're calling it. I think maybe he signaled the wrong direction. Is that possible? Well, I don't know. Let's find out from our... They're calling it pass interference... I believe on Dennis Moore. Let's get it sorted out. Shandy Cobain was pleading his case, and he may have won. He maybe should go from the streets to the courtroom. Uh, He's in law. He should just take it the next step. He's obviously. Uh, I don't think there's. I don't uh, think there's any appealing here. Pass this? interference against the offense. Wow. Has been declined. Will be fourth down. Well, if you're brush blocking on the line, and you give him a brush block, and you. Well. It looked as though, I didn't mean to cut you off there, Dan, but it looked as though Tacoma was going to go for it, not realizing it was fourth down. Uh -huh. They didn't realize they lost their down there. Now I think they may have called a timeout to uh, bring the punting unit on. A little risky going for it on, on fourth and seven from your own 16-yard uh, line. If they've thought better of it, there's a timeout on the field. We'll take a timeout as well and be back with eight minutes and 32 seconds to play in the third. Tacoma seven, Seattle six. We are back at the Tacoma Dome, second half of Bacon Bowl 17. Hope you're enjoying it. We certainly are. It's been a great football game so far, and there will be more fireworks to come, I'm sure. Maybe some right here as Troy Davis is in to do the punting for Tacoma from deep in his own end. And back there deep is number seven, Brett Smith. He's explosive. He's returned one punt, 75 yards for a touchdown tonight. Let's see what he can do here. Fumbled snap, but he has all day. Vic Miner in to try to block it. Nobody down in coverage. Brett Smith's going to have all kinds of running room. Does a little juke, though. Maybe one juke too many. Oh, look at the great tackle. A nice return by Brett Smith as he tried to just pick his way through the hogs. Got through four or five of them before finally being dropped well into Tacoma territory at the 32-yard line. So Seattle's going to set up shop in, in good shape. You know, I'm excellent to coverage by our camera people as we look at the replay right here. We do a little hokey-pokey to the left. We go to the right. We come back up the middle again, and kaboom. Well, we should have went... And let's take a look at the block once again right here. The block is most everything. Here comes uh, Miner trying to get it as the ball is fumbled on the snap. And here we get the block. Oh, oh just missed it. Game of inches. I mean, that was just closer than the fuzz on a chick's ear. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, those down-home expressions. Is that Keith Jackson over there? Mike Sutton. Listen, run to oh, Shell Mays. Closed that hole in a hurry, boy. Coming from the back side, Shell Mays did not quit on that play. Another little dance. Show a little celebratory dance. It's good to see that. And it's uh, going to bring up a second long now for Seattle. I believe they'll say no gain on that play. Let's see what they do give them. Oh, he got a yard. We'll give him a yard. Second and nine. 
Seattle pounding the ball at Tacoma here, though. Not passing the ball at all here in the second half. Just trying to pound the ball down their throat. I don't know what the strategy is here. They do have a good passing quarterback. Good wide receiver coming out right now. Let's find out whether or not it's in the cards. Okay, Barden under center now. Play action fake. He's going to roll out it toward Don Walkinshaw. Gets a good block, though. And buys him some time. Throws for Smith incomplete. Down low. Smith coming back to the quarterback as a good wide receiver will do when the quarterback's in trouble. I'll tell you what, I, I don't know who it was. It may have been Rick Peters, number 77, the big offensive tackle, who came back and threw the block on Waukesha, but that bought Eric Barton enough time to at least get rid of that ball and not have to take a sack. That could turn out to be a key play. It's, it's third and uh, nine rather than third and about 18 or 19. Waukesha is pretty big, but he's pretty fast for a guy who's pretty big. Yeah, he is. He's, he's been impressive here tonight, to say the least. Third and nine. Pressure from the backside. They try that little inside pass again. And last time it went nowhere, and this time it goes nowhere. A pickup of one to Brett Smith. I saw them practice that, and against their own defense, it worked incredibly well. Everybody's a coach in football. That particular play would have worked if you'd have had somebody to do the old hook and lateral to, because your whole strong side of the field is wide open. Think about it. Look, here we go again. Who does he have to go to? He has to go back to where the guys are. He should have turned off and trailing back. He flips it to it, and away he goes. That's my Sandlot suggestion for the day. <laughs> We've got the coaches wired. Unfortunately, we don't have them wired to you, Dan. Otherwise, maybe they'd do it. Well, Seattle's going to go for it here on fourth and seven. They don't have a field goal range from the 30. And Barton's got all kinds of running room. He's got the first down and more inside the 20, the 15, the 10, and knocked out his feet finally down at the 10-yard line. Over to make the stop, Robert Jackson from his outside linebacker spot. But Barton, that was not a design play. I think he rolled out looking for a receiver, but saw nothing but green in front of him and did a good job of running the football. Well, I'd have called that, sure. It didn't work the last time, but it did this time for 20 yards. There he is, off and running. Now he's going to the outside. Now we'll take it to the sideline. At the last minute, thought he could get a block, and then he ran out of blockers. Goes down to the 10 for a gain of 20 yards. The, tack mark. the tackle by Brian Grinnan on the play. And Seattle now down at Tacoma's 10. They were there a minute ago and had an untimely fumble. Let's see what happens here. The give on the carry is Randy Ellis. His first carry of the game, and he's knocked off his feet after a pickup of maybe one, two yards. So Ellis getting some action, spelling Sam Brayboy. Randy Ellis in his sixth bacon bowl, 5'11", 210-pounder, has also played linebacker in this game as well as uh, tailback there. And uh, again, the Hogs, as they have all day, do a good job of stretching that play out, not allowing him to turn the corner. And Daryl LaMonica, or Daryl LaMonica, that's his cousin, <laughs> the old quarterback, Richard LaMonica, comes up to finish him off. This time, Seattle with a new look. They're sending both their wide receivers to the top of the formation. And they give straight ahead to Sutta, who bowls his way down inside the five to the one. Now oh, they're going now. They got momentum. They can feel it. They've got Tacoma backing up on their heels. Tacoma might do well to call a timeout right here to talk things over, but they've already wasted one. Do you think fatigue might be a factor at all with the Tacoma defense? They played their hearts out in stopping the run in the first half. Ed, do you think that fatigue could be playing a part in this? Well, it sure seems like they've been on the field a lot for the third quarter. And everybody's got to remember there's a whole other quarter to go afterwards, so I guess we're probably going to get our answer here real soon. I think you're right. Well, Seattle now goes to its tight formation. One wide receiver in the game, but don't be surprised to see Suttoth up the gut here. It's been working for him in the second half. Barton Suttoth up the gut. Touchdown, Seattle. Go with what brings you there, and if you can go and find a weakness, you go off right tackle. And you see the man getting up off the pile there is... Well, they're going to go for two. Here we have the replay. Off right tackle, Mike Sutter. Mike Sutter. Good blocking up front. Nice play. Sutter is number four all time in Bacon Bowl history for rushing yards. Coming in, he had 160 yards in five games. Adding a little bit to that total here in the second half after a rather slow first half. And Seattle elects to go for two here. And the ball is fumbled and fallen on by Tacoma, so the conversion will be no good, and Seattle's lead will be only five. <laughs> oh, you love it. You gotta love it. Well, I don't think the handoff ever got to Brave Boy. And if, if it was Brave Boy, and I'm not positive it was, but if it was, that's his second fumble of the game in a costly situation. We'll be back in more of Bacon Bowl 17 right after this.
Insurance is puzzling sometimes, but your State Farm agent can put it all together for you. The best value in car insurance, low-cost coverage for your home, life insurance, coverage for your health. Everything fits together when all your family insurance needs are served by one person, your State Farm agent. What is wireless? And what does AT&T have to do with it? For the sidekicks, it's finding alternative transportation to the big game. For Joan Piper, it's sending email from her laptop to an associate's messaging device hundreds of miles away. And to Dave Coates, it's dialing his cellular phone with just call home. His voice introducing AT&T Wireless Services, technology that sets you free. Call 1-800-IMAGINE. We are back at the Tacoma Dome, and our man on the sidelines, Lyle Benjamin, is standing by with the man who scored the touchdown, Mike Suttoth. Lyle. Thanks, Tim. Down here with Mike. Mike, it looks like you're running over your big right tackle, Rick Peters, number 77. Yeah, Rick Peters and Mike Cousy doing a really good job. The Coleman left is starting to get tired now, and they're just blowing big holes for me every play. Uh, are you guys doing anything special to counteract how they're moving wide on the tackle? Well, they seem to be stepping outside as they're moving inside. All right, thanks, Lyle. Big yeah, hit there on the kickoff. Over. Big hit and a little fight. There's a flag down. There's a fight. Somebody call a cop. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Rumble, how about that? Emotions run high out here. I'm telling you, these guys don't like each other very well. Well, they like each other fine after the game's over tonight. They'll be at the party. They see each other on the road. They see each other in court. They see each other at schools. They'll talk about it. But maybe for this couple hours, uh, things might be a little tense. Right now, there's no point in liking each other. They're trying to, to beat each other. And, and uh, that, that, you don't see that much, though. You don't see fights out here on the field very often. But we saw one right there. I'll tell you, Bob Stone, got to be a little Send bit Send them both to jail. Send them both to jail. <laughs> oh, there's a sense of humor. Let's see what they do do. All right, let's see it again here. Let's see how the fight starts. All right. Boom. Get away from wow. me. Wow. Several players involved. Oh, that's... You never want to see a fight, but it's interesting to see the, uh, the police officers going at it and squaring <laughs> off down there. And you never want to take off your helmet either, because if you do, if well, you do, it's going to be, well... It's going to be ugly. Yeah. <laughs> they, they ended up calling personal fouls saying? both ways here, so it uh, it negates itself, and I think the referees are going to have a little talk. I, I, think the fight. I think they're going to put them both on probation. Yeah. <laughs> They'll have to see their probation officers, who probably are here, so it won't be any problem. I want to take this opportunity to thank Brian Hulquist Productions for putting on a great 1995 bacon bowl. Brian, of course, with very little we to have do with it. A dead ball, unsportsmanlike conduct against the green. Oh, wait a minute. We have a dead ball, unsportsmanlike against the white. Okay, there we go. That's what we thought. Bring it back. It just, will be a first and ten. That was more ceremony than anything else. Let's go back down to the sidelines now, about? the Tacoma side. That's where John the penalty Robinson. was. John? Hold on, Tim. Oh, okay, there you are. Tim, I'm down here at big number 90 down, walking shot down. You've had a couple big plays out there. You're looking like you're doing a heck of a job. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. A lot of great competition out here. These guys get really something to shoot for. All right, everybody knows that uh, you, you had a little stint in the NFL. How's the competition uh, compared to that? Oh, well, with uh, the way my body's demise, it's, it's quite well. It's a little bit <laughs> of competition down here. These guys play real hard. All right, thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks, John. It's all relative. Yeah, it seems really just as fast, but you've lost a step as well. It seems every bit the NFL. Dave Yerbury under center now, back in at quarterback for the Hogs. They trail it now for the first time all day, and Terrence Kyer goes nowhere in a hurry. Seattle fired up. Boy, they've got some uh, some enthusiasm, some adrenaline pumping. Wayne Johnson was there, along with help from Butch Kaysen on the stop for the, the Badgers. And, and uh, I'll tell you, Tacoma's going to have a tough time getting anything going offensively, I think, against a fired-up Seattle defense. They made the big change. You heard Vic Meyer say it. They've dropped Vic Miner now back into a safety position. He's playing back there with Nick Carter. Got a little more speed back there. Brian Grinnan is in at that monster back position now, lining up over the tight end, and it's uh, improved Seattle's defense here so far. 
Yerbury with split backs, and the pitch goes to Kyer, running near side, and it's Vic Miner, boy. I'll tell you, he had a long way to come. You can yeah. tell the former NFL guy, he lined up 10 yards behind the line of scrimmage, snuck up as he recognized the play, and then just sprinted to the ball. Well, would you mind telling me why nobody came out on that uh, toss sweep uh, to block from the line? You have to have a pulling guard or somebody. And the quarterback did his job and threw a block, but there weren't enough bullets to stop everybody else. Look at this now. He's going to go right into a sea of white jerseys and cut it back. By the time he realizes what he's done, he's realized it's time to just take my losses. Defensive tackle Steve Kahani did a nice job that time of stretching that play out, giving Vic Miner time to get there. They've changed quarterbacks here. No, they haven't. It's still your uh, Yearberry. Thought they had changed quarterbacks in midstream, but Dave Yearberry playing in his second bacon ball still under center here for the Hogs. Everett Edwards on the, the pass rush here, but Yearberry does a nice job of getting away from looking at a holding call. There's a flag, a hanky down on the field. The referee himself, Dan Lou, he threw that immediately. He oh, yeah. signaled to us holding against the offense. So I think what happened there is Everett Edwards did a great job of collapsing the, the what what there was, the, some semblance of a pocket there. He came through a gap and completely threw off the blocking schemes for Seattle and uh, the, the Hogs, or the blocking schemes for Tacoma. The Hogs had no alternative but to grab somebody. Well, and you do that to protect your quarterback, too. That Holding against the offense has been declined down to before. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Is he thanking us? Yeah, he's thanking us. Well, you're welcome, Dan. Happy to help. Two minutes, 28 seconds left here in quarter number three. The clock rolling. And Troy Davis in to kick to, again, Brett Smith. Can he do it again? It would be a huge play for Seattle. But almost blocked. Boy, laying out that time, but not blocking it. Smith with a good job of, of feeling it. Laying out and almost getting to that, uh, that punt for Seattle was Jason Kasner, who had the big block on the punt return almost got another big block right there well you want to take a look at uh, being a punt returner first of all you have to catch the ball and when it's hanging up there almost had this blocked and we take a look here's the punt here comes the dive and whoa, oh. that's what you call the flyby man he looked like a fighter didn't he a fighter jet you know you might wonder how close that was yeah that was closer than a Nats eyelash <laughs> Pressure from behind. Oh, boy, I'll tell you what. Eric Barton did a nice job just to get rid of that ball. I don't think he knows how nice it was till he felt the hit from Robert Jackson, the blind side. I don't think he knew Jackson was there. Let's see if he sees him out of the corner of his eye before he gets rid of it here. He drops back. He looks and Kachung, oh. or should I say Kaching? His bell was rung. Wow. Robert Jackson, All-American swimmer out of the University of Puget Sound. I wonder if he did a swim move at the line of scrimmage there to get free. We will never know. There's a look at Robert. Big smile on his face. Always feels good to get a hit on that quarterback. Gray boy running right. I'll tell you what. I've been very impressed with Tacoma. There's not one green shirt there. There's usually four or five yeah. springing that play uh -oh. out. Good hustle, and a flag comes in late. I think there's some frustration here and a flag and sportsmanlike conduct on Seattle. That's going to go against, I believe, Brian Cross. I, I'm not positive, but Brian walked away. It looks like he may have been the guilty party. Now, Brian Jeter and also helping out Scott Brown, they just lead uh, that uh, particular play and the tackle, and I guess because... I don't think... I think it was maybe Shell Mays and Jeter on that play. Dead ball, unsportsmanlike conduct against the offense, third down. Well, they didn't name the guilty party, I guess, uh, innocent until proven guilty, so you don't want to name them publicly until they've been tried and convicted. He allegedly did. Yeah, he allegedly has been charged with, uh, or he's been charged with unsportsmanlike conduct, but it's alleged until he's actually convicted. I, I think it was Brian Krause, but again, I don't, I'm not going to name names. We don't know for sure, and I have no idea what he did, but it, he got flagged nevertheless, and it's uh, third and 20. And big pressure again. Gets it away to Sutton. Sutton has got some room, but not nearly enough as he dives over midfield back to the original line of scrimmage at the Tacoma 49, and Seattle's going to have to punt. I'll tell you, Eric Barton, 
has been under pressure, and they expected that. That's why they rolled him out. The Seattle coaches expected some stunting. They expected a lot of inside pressure from Tacoma. And what Tacoma has done is they're bringing the outside linebackers on blitzes, and a lot of times they're going untouched. Well, you bring the blitz, you open up for the screen or the dump off. And set at that time was the dump off. As a result, they get 10 yards, but not enough, and they're going to have to kick it away. So we haven't seen Mark Henry in some time. He's on to punt. He gets away an end over in punt that will bounce at the 20 right to LaMonica, who's going to run through a couple of uh, passing players. There's a flag down as LaMonica goes down at the 22. Actually, two flags down. I think it may be two completely separate infractions. So uh, Dan Louie's got his work cut out for him to sort this out. Looks and like we have an injured player down for Tacoma. I think it's Shell Mays, but it I think be. he may be cramping. Uh, Scott Brown. Is it Scott Brown? That was Shell Mays, number 86. They've got Scott Brown listed as 86 in the program, so there's some confusion, but there have been some number changes, and Scott Brown is actually 89, Shell Mays 86, and that was Shell, who was the injured player, and we're gonna see the infraction marked off here against the Hogs of Tacoma, and Dan Louie's gonna have to tell us what it was. During return, first down. Another reaction there by the Tacoma Show. coaching staff. Let's hear it, Dave. Let's hear Dave for us. What does he have to say about that? See, they, they, they've got the field position this half. We had it the first half. That, that's exactly right. There you go. That pretty much tells the story that the, the key right now for Tacoma is to regain field position. They've got to put together a drive here with time running out in the third quarter. Time maybe running out. They're only down by five. It certainly is not hopeless by any means. But they've got to establish some kind of offensive continuity here. Seattle's defensive adjustments have been fantastic so far. The quick pass. And Andrew Hankins, with his first catch since very early on, picks up five. So basically like a long handoff there, picks up five, and that's going to end the third quarter of play. As time ticks down, the teams will walk to the other end. They'll switch sides. Tacoma trying to get it going offensively. Seattle trying to hang on, maybe get their running game going some more. It's looked impressive here in the second half of action so far. As we get a look at Andrew Hankins and some rowdy fans at the Tacoma Dome, we'll be back with quarter number four of Bacon Bowl number 17 right after this. Bacon Bowl 17 is brought to you by State Farm Insurance, Tapco Credit Union, Coca-Cola, and Bill's Towing. Now let's go down onto the field for a tech presentation. Thank you very much for your support. That was a presentation. We cut the tail end of that from State Farm Insurance. That's uh, Harriet Benjamin down there. Wow. $10,000 to the Bacon Bowl Association from State Farm Insurance. A major corporate sponsor here, and yeah, right. certainly it's appreciated. <laughs> that, that money is going to some several great causes. Several great causes. Let's head down back onto the field now, and Lyle Benjamin on the Seattle sideline. Lyle. Thanks, Tim. Down here with the dynamic duo, Joe Elliott and Brett Smith. Joe, tell me what they were doing to you guys in the first half. Uh, basically, they were shutting down our run. Uh, thank God our defense kept us in the game so uh, we could get back and, and get back in a, a, on top of the game here. But uh, give credit to our, our defense. They've been keeping us in this game. Finally, we capitalized and got a score. Okay, Brett, what's in store for the second half? Well, their DBs are doing, their DBs are doing a good job, uh, double teaming Joe and myself. And we got to get that tight end open. Uh, other than that, I, I think the ball will start going in the air, and we're going to march down the field on them again. All righty. Thanks, guys. Back to you. All right, thank you very much, Lyle. That, uh, the, they are the, definitely the dynamic duo. Ask uh, Joe why he doesn't have a catch yet, though. I, I'm, I'm curious. As I see he's walking away from you. Doesn't want that question. He knew it was coming. You saw the play there. Hankins, Andrew Hankins, fell down on a little double move, a little pump fake. 
and uh, and uh, <laughs> just fell down. And so it's going to bring up now a third and five for Tacoma. The fake toss. Terrence Kyer's got a hole. Runs into his own man. Ran into the, the big offensive lineman there, number 75, John Munson. Otherwise, you might have had a few more, but plenty of yardage for the first down. And you didn't see it, but Joe Elliott was asked that question by Lyle Benjamin and looked up at me and said, they're not throwing me the ball. All right, here we have the replay as Kyer gets a good block at the line of scrimmage, cuts it to the outside, and then carries it forward for a couple of more yards. Interestingly enough, Tim, first half, it was... Seattle with 16 plays, Tacoma with 33. In the second half, 19 for Seattle. Now this is the 12th play coming up for Tacoma. It's definitely been a tale of two halves. What a what a change. Seattle making those those great coaches making adjustments at halftime. Obviously, we had cameras in the Tacoma locker room. It would have been interesting to hear what was going on in the Seattle locker room. Boy, Rob Jepson going nowhere. Seattle stacks him up there, and big number 78 lost his helmet. Br Benny Radford helmet popped off there, so he got a little TV time. There he is. He's got to look up and wave to mom. Now, you don't get your face on TV when you're football very often. Let's take another look at Jepson here. Well, go right at the line. line of scrimmage, met hard and dropped there. And the first guy there was, was Benny Radford. Nice job defensively. Second down, we'll call it eight yards to go. Come on. Come on, Daddy! Come on, Daddy! Kyer sprung Daddy, out and dropped. Seattle's defense now with some real nice pursuit, much like Tacoma's. Donnie Lowe was there, along with help from Shelton Robinson, and this replay is going to come right into your living room here. As you see, you will see Terrence Kyer trying to find some open territory. Take a look. Well, here he comes, running it to the outside, and right into your Davenport. Look out, move the coffee, watch the dip. Good shot, guys, as usual. Who are you calling a dip? No, 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 no. We said watch the dip. Yeah, yeah, I, I got it. Just trying to get him in trouble with some of the police officers. What was your license number again, Dan? Didn't they have things like that back in Green Bay? <laughs> the only dips in Green Bay played for the Chicago Bears. The pass across the middle. Oh, Hankins almost made a one-handed catch, even though I think that ball may have been intended for Michael Dahl, and he's asking for a holding call. Andrew Hankins almost made a circus catch there. Let's take another look here. We've got uh, a replay of Hankins and Makes just a little move. inside move. That ball, I believe, was intended for Dahl, as you saw him waving his arms. But it's going to bring up fourth down now in long yardage, so we will obviously see uh, Troy Davis back on to punt for Tacoma deep in their own territory. The always dangerous Brett Smith yeah, back. morning against the white team. You look at one fourth of the down. hogs with uh, some ice on the leg down there. That is... Dan Stanley still. An offensive lineman got a little banged up. He's going to watch from the bench for a while. And speaking of the Chicago Bears, the guy on the near side of your screen is Richard Harris, former Chicago Bear. One of the assistant coaches from Seattle. Boy, that's a high punt, but not much distance. And Smith calls a fair catch just inside Tacoma territory at the 49 yard line. And that's where the Badgers will put the ball in play with 12 minutes and 40 seconds left to play here in the Bacon Bowl. Good kicking, good punting, good special teams efforts. Now it's up to Tacoma. This is a big test for them defensively. If they can come up and get good field position, they'll come back. He can go score of 12 to 7. All you need is a touchdown. We're going to take a timeout. Be right back. designated driver. Uh -oh. One of the little fans, boy, that's a great shot. Trying to get down the stairs. A, few, a future Pierce County Sheriff's deputy, possibly, and a future Bacon Bowl participant. Already got the uh, mouth guard in place. <laughs> Won't lose any teeth with that baby in there. Probably got dad here somewhere out in the field playing. Very possibly. Seattle now with good field position. 
And Steve Redmond back in a quarterback for the first time in the second half. Nice stiff arm there. Nice run by Dwayne Joseph. His first carry was a good one. Down about a pickup of eight yards. I'll tell you, talk about an impact in his fourth bacon bowl. Tacoma police officer Dwayne Joseph shows that he maybe should have been in there a little earlier. There's a flag down on the field as well as an injured hog. But take nothing away on that play from Dwayne Joseph. Although the officials may take something away from him. Let's wait and see. Well, that's a good old-fashioned straight arm. We're going to see it again. Boy, it was a nice stiff arm by Dwayne Joseph. Get out right of my to the house. face mask of Don Walkinshaw. Pickup of seven yards on the play, but it's, it's going to come back. In fact, Seattle has moved their huddle back a long way, so this may be a 15-yarder. There's another look at uh, the end of that play as uh, Joseph has ridden out of bounds. Now let's take a look at the injured hog. Boy, you, you hate to see injuries in this game. Yeah. And let's knock on wood that, that nothing is serious among the injured here because it's um, they're just out here playing for the kids and trying to enjoy themselves. You don't want to see anybody get hurt. This telecast is presented by authority of the Bacon Bowl Association and Brian Halquist Productions and is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Bacon Bowl Association or Brian Halquist Productions is prohibited. In other words, don't do it. That's what I could have said that in three words. Don't do it. Read that and don't do it. Don't mess with us. <laughs> don't mess with Brian Hallquist. He'll come find you. Hey guys, I'm telling you. I have to uh, I have to interject something right here. We're at 12:33 to go. We have to start thinking about uh, player of the game here and uh, some input from you guys. Well, I'm thinking if it's anything like the last five minutes of the previous games, a whole lot can change. All right, we're going to take a timeout and come back in just a minute. There you see the crowd on one side of the Tacoma Dome. And let's go down to John Robertson on the Tacoma sidelines with the other grizzled vet of the Bacon Bowl, Murphy Kahuhu. John, take it away. Thanks, Tim. I'm down here with one of the other iron horses of this Tacoma Hog team, uh, other than Jim Wagonblast. Uh, Murphy, how's the competition this year? It's great. Um, every, every year we come out here, we're all prepared in Seattle also, and uh, we just perform good and well. And bearing all injuries here, we, we're going to win this game. Okay, I understand that you and Wagon Blast have a little competition going. What's that? <laughs> he wants me to quit so he can hit, continue on and have more baking bowls, but it's not going to happen. Not going to happen? You're going to play next year too? Well, you know, Lord permits, and uh, I'll do it. And, you know, I, I'm a Christian, and I believe in those things, and so far that's why I'm here 17 years and 49 years old. All right, well, here's wishing you the best. You guys have a good second half. Back to you, Tim. Boy, he's going to play at age 50. You heard it. Ooh. That's great. He and Wagon Blast will both be back, I'm sure, next year. And they lost one member of that their fraternity this year, Bob Sukol. Hung up the cleats and became an assistant coach, the offensive line coach for Tacoma after he had played in 16 bacon bowls. Couldn't take the heat. Oh, Kahoo and right got here. him. I got it. Well, there you see the injured hog. And he's up on his feet, and it's good to see. Uh, that's number 78. See if we can get a name on him. Trying to find him here on, on uh, he's not in the program. Again, they had some number changes. And, uh, oh, it's Benny Rapid. Okay. Yeah, there he is. He's the guy that made the big play earlier. 6'4", 250 pounder, 40 years old. He looks okay. <laughs> Going back to Kahoo real quick. Not only is he here for the children, but he has 13 children of his own, ages 5 through 28. Wow. He's still out here playing. 13 kids. Uh, hopefully he can play long enough. Maybe some of his kids can join him on the field. There's the pass. Joe Elliott's first catch. Isn't going to go for much. In fact, I... I think he lost the yard, but he got a catch. Hey. Not the kind of catch he wanted. He's he considers himself one of the big play guys, and he has been. Last year he made a big play, and the year before he almost broke a kickoff return for a touchdown, tripped over a seam in the carpet. Uh -oh. He'll tell you that's not the case, but uh, he did. Don't let him kid you. And look at the pretty little girls and the and the little boy, waving to the the cameras. Did she she blow us a kiss? I think she blew oh. Brian Hallquist a kiss. Ah. Uh, Oh, I see. Steve Redmond in at quarterback for the Seattle Badgers as they try to just roll some clock. 11:26 and counting left here in the Bacon Bowl. Seattle up by five. 
This one will probably come right back down to the wire, and Redmond wants to throw. Escapes some pressure. Jackson was there, and he's going to run out of bounds for a big loss. Give that sack, I believe, to John McPherson, number 50, but he had plenty of help there from Robert Jackson, as well as Murphy Kahuhu. I think Murphy Kahuhu was over there helping as well. Let's take another look if, if big number 70 was in there. I thought I saw him, but yeah. I don't see him now, so let's just take a look and see. There he goes, running for his life. He's looking to throw at the last second. He fakes. He tries to draw somebody in, but he finally takes the easy way out, out of bounds. You know, Murphy Kahuhu may not have been in the game even then, but what the heck, let's give him credit for part of that, huh? Oh, yeah. I he mean, even if he wasn't in the game, he did a heck of a job from the sidelines. How many kids? 13 kids, ages 5 through 28. Congratulations. Wow. <laughs> or my sympathies, one of the two. Look at Mike Sutton. Sutton barreling his way through some great blocking and picking his way down to about the 41-yard line, a gain of about uh, 9, 10 yards on the play. Nice running by Mike Sutton, and I'm telling you, Seattle is exploiting something they found in the interior of Tacoma's defense. They're running behind the big guys, Peters and Kunze and Ron Sanders, Brian Krause, Dave Clement, all the offensive linemen. Not enough for a first down, but a, a nice run on third and, and a mile. And Mark Henry's coming into punt. Boy, almost blocked by Jackson. And it's a short punt. Takes a Tacoma bounce and is finally chased down there by Mike Chen and down at the 40-yard line. So Tacoma's going to start at its own 40 when we come back for the exciting conclusion of the Bacon Bowl. Insurance is puzzling sometimes, but your State Farm agent can put it all together for you. The best value in car insurance, low-cost coverage for your home, life insurance, coverage for your health. Everything fits together when all your family insurance needs are served by one person, your State Farm agent. Hand in Hand with John L. Scott is a community service program funded by the agents and employees of John L. Scott. Our program provides transportation support to assist food banks and other outside not-for-profit organizations with the delivery of food and other donated items. If your organization needs transportation for a community service program or event, call your local John L. Scott agent or 206-230-7622. Coach Dave Frost watching his Tacoma hey. Hogs. They trail it by five. You make a booze? Yeah. Good. You hear Dave talking. Look at the yards. Total yards. Tacoma 159, Seattle 77. But keep in mind, folks, Seattle had only nine at halftime. Tacoma had 143. So it's been a different second half. And Tacoma trying to put some yards up right now. They've got to. You're very. Little pass to Mike Dahl, and it's popped out of his hands. Michael Dahl very nearly had the first catch of his football career but he was drilled by Sean Jenkins the ball popped up and then was nearly intercepted uh, he didn't hear footsteps let's take a look at it here number 88 Michael Dahl rolling out and here is the oh right in the numbers go he hit it now Dahl having never played football I, I think was was a little premature didn't put that ball away it was starting to look upfield and he got popped second and ten now on the incompletion Coming down to the bottom of your screen was Jesus Villahermosa. Back in there, Wade White split wide on the other side. Split back here behind your Barry. They're going to give the ball. They're trying to get outside is Dwayne Joseph, but he can't get outside. Oh, look at the hit that's being put on him. And that one from Sheldon Robinson says, hello. I used to play with the NFL and used to beat up people like this. <laughs> look at Sheldon. Big number 51. Let's see it again. Oh. oh. Boy, I'm telling you, that, that is a hit. Vic Miner, the other former Seahawk, was there to slow him down. Yep. That's Miner, and Ooh. that's Robinson. You have the right to remain silent. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm sure Shelton was not remaining silent after that, though. I've heard he'll talk a little bit. Talk a little trash. That's what they say. Uh -huh. Rob Jepson. Oh, that was a clock tied again. in the backfield by big number 69 for Seattle. Ernie Hall. Is that Ernie Hall? It is. Ernie Hall getting into the game, the, the veteran of many Bacon Bulls. Ernie has Hall played in 
uh, he's 37 years old. There and, he is, uh, coming in. Just, uh, I hate to use the expression shooting the gap, but with no one there, usually you're going to get hit, but no one was pulling. He made the tackle. Ernie, Ernie Hall is a menacing looking guy. He's kind of got those Mike Singletary eyes. He just looks mean. I wouldn't want to line up across from him. Oh, that punt was very nearly blocked again. And Brett Smith's just going to let it go. If he's smart, he's just going to get away. He does. Usually they'll poison on that and everybody gets away, but Brett's fearless and thought about picking it up. It rolls dead at the Seattle 24, and that's where the Badgers are going to take up uh, shop here as uh, we get going here with 8 minutes and 52 seconds left in Bacon Bowl 17. Keep in mind now, the money raised here, both in ticket sales and in donations, goes right to the children's charities. And if you're interested in helping out, here's how you do it. You send your donations right to Bacon Bowl. The address on your screen, 5242 California Avenue Southwest, Seattle, Washington, 98136. And give what you can. It's a worthy cause. Redmond's give now goes nowhere. Dwayne Joseph, after an impressive early run, has had a couple not go as well for him that time maybe a yard gain for joseph it's going to bring up a second down though for seattle their main objective here is to keep the clock moving and if they can move the chains a few times getting some first downs keep that clock moving they can put this one on ice i wouldn't say anything's on ice in this game until there's less no time left on the clock we remember what happened a couple <laughs> years ago in the last two minutes yep yeah yeah there's no question in this game there are big plays right up until the final moments. Two years ago, Mark Spadoni had to make an incredible play in the end zone to prevent Tacoma from starting and save it for uh, Seattle. There's a fumble. We talk about big plays. That very, very, very nearly could have been a big play for Tacoma. But alertly, number 79 for the Badgers, Dave Clement dove on the loose ball and saved the day because you turn the ball over down deep in Tacoma's territory, that could switch the momentum of this entire game. Well, here's the replay. Clement is Johnny on the spot. Ball pops loose, takes the unnatural bounce on the unnatural turf, and he's right there naturally to pick it up. Well, Eric Barden comes in right now on that play to replace Steve Redmond. You know, Seattle's had problems several times tonight with the hands off, handoffs. Both uh, Bray Boy and Sutup have had trouble getting the handle from both quarterbacks in there. And this time, they're, they're going to throw the ball. Brett Smith can't hang on. That would have been a first down, but he couldn't hang on. Let's get down to Lyle Benjamin. Lyle. Stand down here with Shelton Robinson. There are some serious sticks going on last series. Oh, yeah. You know, it's, it's a hot ball game. You know, a lot of good hitting. Uh, fourth quarter. A uh, lot lots going on. You know, like I say, the series tied 8-8. Eight eight. So, you know, everybody want to go out and play their best, you know, get the fans uh, something to look forward to. You guys are going to hold on, aren't you? Yeah, we're holding on. All righty. Back up to you guys. All right. Thanks, man. Seattle's going to punt. So Shelton will be back out there in a matter of seconds as uh, Mark Henry gets it away. Boy, that's not much of a punt. It's a low twisting punt that's going to twist right out of bounds All right. in All right, Seattle territory. Yeah, and Dave Frost, you heard him back in the background there saying back we're back in the, the ball game. game. They sure are. They got the ball with the Seattle 42. And not a lot of real estate to cover to take the lead here. Thank you for the Christmas present. Let's see whether or not they can open it. That's the only thing I can say about this. Good field position for Tacoma. Ed? We talk a little bit about the coaches from Seattle, the big experience and background they have. We should say something about the Tacoma coaches. The head coach, David Frost, his assistants, Jim Howitson, Daryl Larson, Bob Sutkul, Jim Young, Steve Woodward, Marty Price, and Ron Lewis, and Jerry Laram are all active duty police officers. And Woodard is the only player, only guy in the history to make a play for both teams. Used to be a Seattle police officer, played for Seattle, now playing for Tacoma. Ronnie Eklund, the quarterback. And to give up a little counter move to number 20. Yep. Was that 28? Yeah, it's, I think it's 28. I couldn't find a 20. I think it was Hankins. Pick up a seven for Andrew Hankins. Well, Eklund is back in there. He engineered their first to score. Here's the replay coming out. Eklund comes over again, and he waits. And here comes the fake of the first man. Give to the second. Coming, running it up. Gets a block. Turns it up for another three more yards before he's finally brought down on the play. Good tackle by Butch Casey. Well, that was a nice uh, uh, bit of uh, play design on right. Tacoma's part. They fake it inside. They had Hankins looking as the lead blocker. He wheeled around and came back with a handoff. And picked up seven. Second and three now. To give to Jepson. Got some room to the 25. Still on his feet. Knocked down inside the 25 to the 24. Well, I'll tell you what, 
Tacoma is not going to take anything lying down. We got our bags packed, baby, and the train's leaving, and we're getting on without you, so let's get ready to rumble. Let's go down now. I, I believe we've got a, a fan, and is it John? John, are you down there with a, one of the fans getting their money's worth tonight? Yeah, I'm down here. I got Josh down here. How you doing, Josh? Good. You, pretty good. Are you a Tacoma fan? Yep. You got any special, anybody special you're rooting for out here? No, mm, uh, not really. What school do you go to? Salt Middle School. Adult middle school? You enjoying yourself? Yeah. All right, is Tacoma going to come back in the second half and win this game? Yeah. All right. I hope. What? I said all right. Thanks for coming out. Enjoy the rest of the game. Back up to you, Tim. All right, thanks, man. That was uh, Terrence Kyer up the middle. And I'm telling you what, I don't know how well this translates on your TV at home, but this crowd can get loud. Before that play, they were stomping their feet and cheering. It sounded a little bit like the kingdom in the ninth <laughs> inning of game uh Five of the the Yankee series. It, it was it was pretty good roar for the uh, bacon ball. You know what we need? We need some music here. We need that. Da, 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 da. Maybe you're tired of that by now. Maybe you can sing that. For no, us. no, it's we all right. Get you on the PA. It, not in the, the contract. Crowd fired up. <laughs> here we go. The noise again, and it's second out of five. Jepson. Not much there, but he makes some. Dives down near the first down. He's going to be short. Pick up a four down to, well, let's say the 16. They had to get across the 15 near the 14 for a first down. So it's going to bring up a third and about a yard. Jepson didn't have much to work with here, but he made something. He basically ran through the tackle of Donnie Lowe. Lowe hit him high, and that's not <laughs> what you want to do. I love it. Well, there's an excellent candid shot right there of a lady enjoying the ball game, and as are we here. You really can't help but enjoy this. I hope you've been with us all the way and you're going to stick with us for the final 420 because you're going to see some big plays. Eklund hoping to make one right here. Split backs, one wide receiver, and the give to Kyer. They're keeping it on the ground. And Kyer just picks and spins his way. Off He's tackle for a couple. First down. That's all you need. Good job by Terrence Kyer. It looked as though his momentum or his forward progress had been stopped. He did a good job of cutting it inside and, and making something out of nothing. Well... Dan Louie's going to spot the ball. He's going to take a timeout, however, and he'll want to measure it. I think it's first down. I think the nose of the football is touching the 14, and they just had to get near the 14 to get the first down. But I, I think you're right. They're going to bring the chains in to eyeball it and make sure. This is a big play. I'm sure, though, Tacoma's going to go for it, even if it's fourth and inches. So it's definitely four down territory down here in the red zone. You're down by five. You have three minutes and 52 seconds left. Very likely your last chance to get points on the board. So you got to make the most of the opportunity. This is a very similar situation. The first down. Got the credit card out. Rolled it down the pole. The ball moved. It's first down. There you see some of the high school cheerleaders on hand rooting for the hometown team. It's first down. Tacoma at Seattle's 14-yard line. As I said, three minutes and 52 seconds left, and Kyer, boy, he's running hard. Eight carries, 35 yards, and I'm guessing more to come here. They've been uh, running those guys this entire drive. Double tight. Play action fake. He wants the big tight end, but overthrows him. Michael Dahl down at the five, but it's over his head. Incomplete. Brings up second down now in 10. Well, that play was designed for him all the way. There was nobody else really open, and you got to have at least two options here. The first was the doll. The second one should have been somewhere over the middle, and the third should have been somebody in the end zone, but nobody was there. You guys did good. You guys did good. <laughs> An enthusiastic uh, Tacoma coaching staff. Let's listen in and see what Dave Frost has to say as this play commences here. Dave Yerbury back in at quarterback, by the way. Not much there. You're very makes something. And coach, what you, what's your reaction to that, buddy? This is no time to be shy, coach. <laughs> we got a breather. We got a breather. The breather he's talking about, unfortunately, is an injured badger on the field. We'll uh, check his condition. That's big number 55, F.J. Miles, the 38-year-old, nine-year Bacon Bull veteran. Played eight years of semi-pro, played at the University of Washington, and right now he's down on the field. Watch it, watch the right side of your screen. There's number 55. We can see if we see how he gets hurt. Well, he's in on the tackle, and 
appeared to have his leg just yeah. stretched out there maybe an ankle twist or something he's up and coming out the field there it is again watch his yeah someone landed on his ankle i think and, and uh i think that's your injuries he's yeah. in a lot of pain as he's being helped out the field it's his right leg as you can see uh, we, we hope F.J. Miles is okay. Nine-year veteran with the Seattle Police Department. You hate to see that. You know, over the years, though, it's happened to a few of the guys. Orthopedic surgeons will watch seven. games like this and, uh, okay. and learn a lot of their own practice models. The body can only give and take so much. Darryl, Darryl. All right, here we go. Dave Yerbury at the 12-yard uh, line. Third down and seven yards to go. Throw into the end zone, got a man! Touchdown! Did he catch it? Touchdown! The Hogs have taken the lead. Michael Dahl's first catch in football is a touchdown. My, oh, my. If Dave Meehouse were here, that's what he'd be saying. My, oh, my. Unbelievable! Unbelievable! He went for the dramatic. Look at the replay. Here comes the rollout. Here comes the set. He's looking. It's up in the air. Get the rebound, Michael Dahl. You did it. You got it. Stay in. Don't drop it. Touchdown. Boy, he did Kobe. drop it, but they say he had it. See, does he come down with it? Let's take a look. That's all he has to touchdown. do. Yep. He came down with both feet, then dropped it. That's a touchdown and a huge play. That is a huge play for the former basketball player from Western Washington University in his first football game. This is a big extra point, 13-12 to Comer. They can take the lead by two. The kick from Tim Fredericks is up, and it's good. Fredericks got hit after the play, but he's okay. Oh, that's a big play. Let's get ahead of John Robertson. John, can you believe it? Thanks, Tim. Hey, awesome play. I'm down here. I'm down here with Michael Dahl. I understand this is one of the first times you've been in pads playing football. How's it feel? Well, it feels pretty good. It's a little bit different. I played college basketball, so it's a lot more challenging. You don't get hit a lot in yeah. uh, <laughs> basketball, but it's a lot of fun. All right. So you, you score the touchdown. You take the lead. You're up 14-12 with just under three minutes to go. What's your guys' plan to hold them? Our defense is dominating so far. We've hurt ourselves to put their 12 points up there, so... Our defense will win it for us. I have confidence in it. All right. Well, good luck in the, in the room in remaining minutes. Thanks, nice catch, bud. Back to you, Tim. And there he is, getting mobbed by his fellow hogs. <laughs> He'll be king hog tonight, boy, if they hold on and win this. Had some potential catches earlier that went away. Boy, I tell you what. He just scored the winning basket on a dunk. Yeah. That was the old R.C. Owens alley-oop revisited, if you remember those days, uh, way back when. I'm not as old as you, Dan, well, but I, okay, uh, I've seen the black and white uh, scratchy film. My eight settled the R.C. Owens. And, and Don Hudson and all those guys, right? Right. You, you, you were probably watching Hudson his rookie year back there. Right, I believe, well, yeah. yeah. I wish <laughs> I had his card. <laughs> and there's the, the injured... Badger on the sidelines again. We hope uh, that's FJ Miles. We wish him well. Here's the kickoff from Mark Crandall. This is Joe Elliott. He's a big play guy. See if he's got one in him here. Touch inside, spinning, still on his feet. Now he gives Seattle great field position. Great field position out to the 39-yard uh, line. So they've got 61 yards to Pater. Two minutes and 48 seconds to get there, Dan. I'm wondering why they didn't try squibbing a kick and knocking it off one of the white jerseys and trying to recover a fumble. Well, you can okay, give up good field position on, if you guys, do that. On, Tacoma has played a game of field position, and they've got, uh, actually, Seattle, as it turned out, got pretty good field position. But let's see, boy, if the home team can hang on for their first Bacon Bowl victory in a long, long time. Seattle will have something to say about it. Steve Redman under pressure. Throws the screen, though. Got it. Met by Sean Mays and dropped at the line of scrimmage. What a hit by Mays. And the fans from Tacoma realize it now. That clock is still ticking. There's no two-minute morning in this ball game. Nice dance, Shell. Again, Shell's brother Stafford, who many of you might remember from his days at the University of Washington and with the Minnesota Vikings, is here tonight as a coach for Seattle. Shell, of course, playing for Tacoma, and there's a lot of rivalry there. I think uh, Stafford may have had a chance to go down to coach Tacoma, but he likes competing against his brother. Shell with the upper hand there. What a play. Imagine growing up in that household. <laughs> A little bit of football talent. Redmond in some trouble again. Oh, he's had a little 
Tony Bailey just picks it up and dives out of bounds, and I, Steve Redman has got to at least have the wind knocked out of him. We are going to show you this up close and personal, and you tell me, is this a friendly little football game, or are these guys out for blood? You tell me. Watch this. Here comes the look. He is going to be bookended right there. Oh, there Robert the ball Jackson. knocked loose. It's coming right at you. Move the coffee pot. Ooh. Robert Jackson, I'm telling you, he has been all over the field tonight. Just done an outstanding job defensively for the Hogs. In his ninth bacon bowl last year, he had a couple quarterback sacks. He has at least one tonight. And that, uh, that's, uh, that's number two right there. That was a heck of a play. He had to come a long way from the opposite side. Great job. Third and long now for Seattle. The last gasp here. Eric Barton throws it. Up for grabs and incomplete, and it's fourth down. The celebration has started minute 35 here, and I, I would have to think Seattle's going for it on yeah. fourth and about uh, 18. I think so, too. You have to go for it and keep going. And those replays we're seeing tonight, what amazing work by our camera people on the field and up here in the box with us as well. It's just truly a joy to watch and to recreate it. And uh, here's one coming right here. Look at this. The last time was in 1989. The crowd will tell the story here, folks. You watch Eric Barton. Reggie Chapman sealed with a pick. Let the celebration begin in Tacoma. Eric Barton's face shows it all, as does Reggie Chapman's. We're going to take another look at it. Redmond just, or uh, make that Barton trying to make something happen, just overthrows his intended receiver, Brayboy, right into the waiting arms of Reggie Chapman. Tacoma's got the football in Seattle territory. There's uh, about, oh, 75 ticks left on the clock, and it's rolling. And I think we'll see Tacoma potentially just take a knee here. Let's see what Lonnie Eklund does. Little quarterback keeper. Yep. Just doesn't want to fumble the football. Although you know those guys, Shelton and the boys are in there pulling on it. Oh. Well, if I can dig up another cliche right here, guys. Stick a fork in Seattle. They're done. Well, look at the Seattle fans. They're all getting up and leaving and heading for the exits. Standing ovation here from the fans in the Tacoma Dome for their beloved Hawks. Maybe Jesus can be the good luck charm and brought himself back a win. One minute, one minute, we're there. One minute. Well, the, the clock has stopped. Seattle's taking a time out here, obviously, to uh, try to make something happen. But meanwhile, the, the Brian Grennan and or the, make that um, again, uh, looking at the Seattle numbers. The Hogs are making uh, signing autographs. That was Von Narcisse signing an autograph for a young fan on the sidelines. And Bob Stoll looks like he may lose his debut as the coach in the Bacon Bowl. Shell Hayes and Von Narcisse. They're going to enjoy this one with the post-game celebration tonight, my friends. Jesus Fuller Hermosa in motion. i got to believe they're just going to take a knee. Now Terrence Kaya is going to get the carry and not go very far. Everett Edwards grabs his feet and immediately calls timeout with 56 seconds left. Seattle has uh, their eyes on getting the ball back here with calling timeout. There's still uh, the enough time here. That's a long time we're going to get to run the clock now. So what they want to do is they're going to play. They're going to do a play now. They're looking at his wristband, so they're going to do on a play. Let's look for pass. You heard the coaches. They're, they're looking at the wristband over there on the far side, so they think they're going to try to pick up okay, the first down here on third and eight. We're just going to snap the ball. We'll take the penalty. That'll only move it back. Uh, we should be able to still get a pretty good. Right. The clock's not moving now, see? When they do start the clock, the strategy, as you heard it, is just to let the clock roll. But unfortunately, the clock is not going to roll. They've got to get going here. 
They've got to take the snap. That'll get the clock rolling, and then they'll take a penalty after that if they don't pick up the first down. They'll probably just try to run it out on fourth down here or bring their punting unit in and let it roll. Let's see what they do. Jepson knocked back. Steve Kahani was the first man to meet him. And I don't know if you can hear it, but the Hogs coaches behind us are going hog wild. They're up in the coaching box, and they are enjoying this. Okay, okay. It ain't going to work. It ain't going to work. It ain't going to work. Have him punt it. Work it. Right, punt it. Work, work it. Yeah. We're going to punt. We're punting. Time out. Time out. Call time out. A little confusion there, as you see. This is great. Uh, you get microphones no, on the coaches. Right, left, huh? yes, well. Okay, here's Bob Stahl. <laughs> a little quiet at this point. I, I'm sure the wheel's still turning now, trying to figure out a way to get the ball back and drive the length of the field in, in 51 the seconds. And I'll tell you, that guy right there, he is capable. Video was capable of bringing him back down the field. It's Eric Barton. Actually, Steve Redmond showed last year he's very capable right. in the second half. Both those guys are capable Did you of tell pulling him that? this one out. Okay. Davis! Let's Davis! Listen in. Troy! Well, they don't have him in. Well, they want Troy Davis to just kick it off to one side or the other. Vic Miner drops back deep rather than Brett Smith here. And Troy just kicks it straight up the middle. They tell him to angle it to the sideline. He kicks it straight up the middle and into the end zone, which is exactly what the Tacoma coaches did not want to see happen. No, no. Because that gives Seattle the ball at 20 with 42 seconds left and 80 yards of real estate to travel. And I'll tell you, they all do somehow, some way, every bacon ball comes right down to the wire. Let's hear Bob Stoll and see what his plan of attack is going to be here. 17. Hey, 17. Hey. 17 naked. Go back. Full twins right, 17. A throwback. A, a throwback. 17 throwback. Let's see what that is. It could be a double pass, possibly. I don't know. We'll see. Halfback option. We will watch with you here. And we'll keep you apprised of the clock. Here we go. The crowd will make as much noise as they can. Barton's got all kinds of room to run. That's first down yardage, but they need more than that. They need to get him up in a hurry. Tacoma's going to hold him down. Shell Mays is going to hold him down as long as he can. 31 seconds left. The clock stopped to move the chains. And Seattle ready to go. So whatever play they called was aborted as, as uh, Barton just decided to hold onto it and run. 68 yards to go. Inside pressure. Barton rolls away from it and throws it incomplete. Yeah, it was not a bad play selection right there. He didn't have anything going deep. He figured, I'm going to get sacked. I'll throw it near a guy, and we'll stop the clock with 23 seconds to go. Intended for Sean Hamlin. I'm telling you, with 23 seconds left, 23 Seattle's seconds. got come some on, come deep on. speed. You know Tacoma's in a prevent defense. They've got all their guys back, LaMonica and, and uh, Chapman, and the guys will be very deep, but you have deep speed. You've got Joe Elliott, who won't tell me how fast he is. He doesn't want them to know. I'm guessing probably 4-4 speed there. You got Brett Smith, who has deceptive speed on the other side. He's fast as well. You got to put the ball up deep. There they go. Good pressure again. They can't get anything deep established. And Barton's in trouble. He's got to run. He has chased. Robert Jackson gets him and drags him down. In bound team. 14 seconds left. The clock to stop. 12. It's rolling. 10. You can see it on the screen. They're counting it down here at the Tacoma Dome. One second left. Well, let's see. I think they're going to, I don't think it's over. One second, one second. Hey, come on, good. Get off the field, get off the field. One second. We told everybody this is how these games end. <laughs> let's, let's listen. Please reset the game clock to one second. Please reset the game clock to one second. Yeah. All right, you're still alive, Bob Stoll. And you guys at home, sitting on your sofa, are you going to be here next year? I think you ought to come out. Or at, at least make a donation to the vacant ball. Uh, you get your money's worth out here. These guys play their hearts out. And, and the Tacoma police car down in the end zone has its sirens and lights going. They'll be celebrating in Tacoma tonight. Here we go. It ain't over yet. One second left, last gasp. Barton's going to get some pressure, and he knows it. They just got to hold him out. 
He's throwing it as deep as he can. Incomplete. The game's over. We did it. We did it. We did it. Oh, my God. Oh, Well, an editorial comment there. Mott still walks across to celebrate or to congratulate, I should say, Dave Frost and his coaching staff. What a great, great game played by and coached by the Tacoma players and the Seattle players. I mean, they both did an outstanding job. It was a great game to watch, don't you think, fellas? Just an outstanding you, game to watch. An outstanding game indeed. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Sure was, game, and the ending guys. didn't disappoint us, just like it always is. Yeah, uh, reminiscent of so many bacon bowls. The last Great play game. was significant. And that's all you can ask for in a football game is you, you see both teams now uh, meeting each other. They're, they're friends now again after the game, although there is no love lost in that uh, 60 minutes of football. The four 15-minute quarters, absolutely no love lost. These guys will socialize tonight, though, and, and get together and swap war stories and, and uh, look forward to next year. And I think most of these players will be back. A lot of new players this year in their first Bacon Bowls, and I think uh, you'll see a lot of them back. Let's go down now to Lyle, who's standing by with Bob Stoll. Lyle. Okay, thanks, Tim. Thank you very much down here with Bob Stoll. Bob, can you tell us what happened there in the fourth quarter? Well, it was, it was a lot of fun. It was a good game. Uh, Tacoma played very hard, and uh, they jammed that last one in there and did a good job. We came up the second half and ran the ball real well, put it in, and but they did an excellent job. It's a heck of a football game. It's fun to see these guys come out here, you know, Guys that don't have to do this and, and practice for a couple of weeks and come out and put the game together, they do a real good job. It's a lot of fun. And most of all, the money goes to charity, children's charity. So, and since I work with the Boys and Girls Club, I feel very good about the situation. And so, uh, again, it was a lot of fun for those guys. A well-played game. Okay, thanks a lot, Bob. Now we're going to go over to John with the Tacoma coach. Thanks, Lyle. Dave Frost is, is out here. Uh, hey, first of all, congratulations. Thanks very much. We really appreciate that. All right, it was a heck of a game you guys oh, it was brought. A heck of a game. It's just like every year, you know, it's a, it's a high intensity, uh, it's a free for all sometimes. Today was. You know, you could tell we were ahead. We were. We were moving the ball fairly well. Seattle came back and played an excellent game. You guys brought it all out here on the field, and, and you left it here on the field. That's right. That's right. Now it's back to our regular work of protecting the public. Okay, for, from, from opening play, uh, the special teams kind of set the tone for this whole game, and you guys followed suit there, and you just beat it, beat it, beat it down their throats the whole time. Right. And I still, I still got to give a lot of the credit to the defense. Our offense came through for us, but our defense is what's won the game. All right. Well, congratulations, and we'll see you again next year. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Tim, we're back up to you. Bye. All right, thank you. Boy, I'll tell you what, that was a great job of coaching by a guy who really hasn't coached football right. in the past. And, uh, I, you know, he, he just did an outstanding, outstanding job. Both sides. Good coaching on both sides. A well-played game. Let's take a timeout. We'll come back with a trophy presentation, the MVPs, and we'll wrap this whole thing up after this. Bacon Bowl 17 has been brought to you by State Farm Insurance, Tapco Credit Union, Coca-Cola, and Bill's Towing. There's your final score and another thriller. Tacoma wins for the first time in six years. They lost five in a row, the final 14-12. Right now on the field, they are doing presentations to the MVPs of both teams and the offensive and defensive MVPs. And Brett Smith, as you see, is the offensive MVP for Seattle. Mark Spadoni was selected as the defensive MVP. For Tacoma, the offensive MVP, well, the, the, the MVPs were LaMonica and Robert Jackson. And overall, and Donald Walkinshaw is named the overall MVP. A defensive player wins the overall MVP award. That may be a first in Bacon Bowl history. Well, I think it's well deserving. This was a defensive game. We knew there wouldn't be a high score. We knew special teams would pretty much figure out who did what. 
And Wackenshaw did his job of sacking the quarterback. There he comes right there. You see the statistics on him. Spent five months with the San Diego Chargers, and he probably feels like he spent five years with us here tonight. You know, that is a tough call. He, he played a great game, but so did Robert Jackson. So did Lamonic, and so did that entire Hogs defense. They were all over the field. You could have given this award to almost anyone. I mean, Shell Mays, great game. The list goes on and on. They all, Von Narcisse. Reggie Chapman, um, Donald Ciprin, Al Batista, everybody played well for Tacoma. That award could have gotten anybody. They all should take a lot of pride in how they played tonight, as should Seattle. I'll tell you what, the fans, like we said, certainly got their money's worth out here this evening. And the money, of course, goes to the great charities, as you mentioned, Ed. Right. That's the real winner. Yeah, the game got really tight at the end, so we didn't get a chance to talk to them, talk about a lot of the charities. But Law Enforcement Youth Camp, Mary Bridge Hospital, Boys and Girls Clubs of King County, and the list goes on. They should all be acknowledged. Uh, um, they also are involved in this event. And there comes Dave Frost to accept the trophy from Harriet Benjamin. Right now, Rob Jepson has it. And a kiss for Harriet. I'll tell you, that's, a, that's one happy football team relieved. It's the monkeys off their back. Now, let's take a look at how it stacked up statistically. I have a feeling these are going to be a little bit closer than they were at halftime when we took a look at the statistics. At that point, it was uh, very heavily weighted toward Tacoma, and here's how they uh, finished up. Offensive plays, definitely favoring Tacoma. Rushing yards, def oh, well, actually, they're still pretty lopsided. Rushing yards, huge in Tacoma's favor. The passing yards is the big statistic, though. Tacoma managed 104 yards through the air. Seattle just 28. The total yard more than double in Tacoma's favor. And uh, the penalties, well, 7 for 62. That kind of kept Tacoma off the scoreboard for a while. Now let's take a look at a highlight here. Yearberry, this was the game-winning touchdown. You see Michael Dahl, the middle of your screen, going up to get the rebound, as it were. The former basketball player scores the biggest basket <laughs> of his life, the biggest conversion of his life. And, uh, boy, you don't think he was happy? Watch this. Uh, that's excitement right there. Now let's take a look at Seattle's touchdown to give them the lead. It's Mike Sutta just plowing through behind that big offensive line for the touchdown. At that point, Seattle seemed to have taken control of this football game. They were running the ball much more effectively than they had in the first half. It seemed as though they were going to be able to run the ball at will, but no, that wasn't the case at all. In fact, uh, Tacoma stiffened when they had to. Some uh, outstanding individual performances by the guys. I, I tell you, Robert Jackson and Don Walkinshaw, the two outside linebackers, were everywhere. We called their name over and over and over constantly putting pressure on on Barden or Redmond just never letting Seattle get into an offensive continuity Dan our final score again from Bacon Bowl 17 Tacoma 14 Seattle 12 now let's take a look at the people who helped bring you this executive producer Brian Hallquist our producer tonight and he did a great job folks Gary Colano and uh, you have my thanks Gary you did an outstanding job Director Doug Wetz, I, uh, Bob Palmer, technical director, and you will see the names flash by. They all did a great job. It was an outstanding telecast technically. Our thanks to the crew here at uh, the Tacoma Dome for another great job. The players from Tacoma mingling with the fans, they will enjoy this one tonight. We hope you enjoyed it here on Prime Sports Northwest. Next year, we hope to see you at the stadium. If not, we'll see you right back here on Prime Sports Northwest. Let me thank all the guys that shared the booth and the microphones with me tonight. Ed Troyer from the Pierce County Sheriff's Department, another great job. Thank you very much. He was Had with a great us last time. year. Dan Bartolovic, nicely done, my friend. Added some valuable insight for us as well. And our two sideline guys. I'd like to thank John Robertson and Lyle Benjamin for a job well done. We hope you enjoyed the insights we were able to bring you, the locker room. Uh, being down on the sidelines with the guys that did it. And there's the victorious hug. Tacoma breaks the drought. They win it 14-12. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you next year. Good night, everybody.